Okay, welcome to the linear regression model lecture. Uh, for this session, we will learn about the multiplicative model uh, models. Actually, um, the focus of this lecture is on the additive models, but then um, in the real application, uh, there are many um, phenomena that can be modeled using the multiplicative one. Okay, so then uh, we will learn about it um, and then we will learn how to transform this model into the uh, linear model that we are used to um, and then how to make inference from this model. Okay, so according to this book, this is kind of like, okay, when you say multiplicative or additive is basically on the relationship between the error and the uh, response variable in here that you have that the error um, the response is the sum of the expected value and the error and here the response variable is the product of the respective um, the expected value and the error and then so um, this is the explanation of it or if I may say okay so the model that we usually have is that, for example, again, I will always write something like this and then blah, 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 plus theta p, x p, plus the epsilon, this is the error, and then here what we have, okay, and then the previous, this is the additive model, and then the previous one that we have, for the multiplicative one is that e to the power of um, beta naught uh, and then we have e to the power of um, beta 1 x 1 and then so on and then we have I just copy this uh, and then e to the power of oops beta p of C, X, P, and then we have e to the power of epsilon. Okay, this is a multiplicative model. If you want to see how um, it looks like in another form, then we can just have, okay, let's say just have this one. Okay, we can just use the property of the exponential, then we have this, okay, beta 1 x1 plus blah 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 plus beta p xp, and then here I just write it as still e to the power of s of epsilon. And then you can see here, this one in here is that the, um, okay, this is the expected value of y. And then this part here is your error. Okay, this is the error. Okay, while the one in here this is the expected value again of C. It is the expected value of your y, and then this is the error term. Okay, so this is the error term. So, in here we have that this is the additive model. And this is the uh, multiplicative model. And then, because we just learned about the additive model, can't we do something on the multiplicative model? The answer is yes, we can do that thing that is just usual math. And then how to take out or to put down the power in here because you want it to be in the linear form. Then you just do the anti 
or the inverse of that function that is the logarithm so we have the logarithm of y on the left side and on the right side we just have all these things right all these things and then plus the epsilon itself now our multiplicative model becomes an additive model but with the y the response variable now is not y but that y star if i may say something like that which is the logarithm of y okay so this is how we do transformation of this kind of multiplicative model into the additive model and then all other inferences can be conducted similar to that that we used to do for the additive model now let's have a look at the example of the uh, um, multiplicative model so this is about the um, what is it the salary dependent variable y used to measure executive compensation that is the annual salary and then it is um, decided that the salary probably can be explained by these five variables that are the years of experience years of education gender number of employees supervised and the corporate assets and there's also additional information that the years of experience there is like a quadratic term for it which means that the effect of experience is um, somehow at some point increased but maybe later will decrease and then there is an interaction between gender and uh, what is the number of employees supervised so for those who are um, suspecting that there's gender issue here maybe we can investigate it later okay so then um, we'll just have a look straight away at the result okay so this is the result and then okay i'll just put it okay so that result here is actually based on the model okay the result there is actually based on oopsie Based on this model, I'll just take it. Okay. So we have that y equals beta naught plus beta one x one, and after here, but plus beta seven x seven, where x one, x two up to x seven are defined as this thing. Okay, so then, oops, uh, I need to put the error, otherwise I should just, and this is not the y, is that the logarithm of the salary, okay, the expected logarithm of the salary, or if I don't want to write the expected sign, then I just put the error here, so the data is proceed based on this model okay and first before we say something about the result the first thing we need to do is to check whether whether the result uh, whether the data the model fits the data okay in that kind of test we need to do the goodness of fit test okay that is by global f test And then, so then for the global F test, we have our hypo, hypothesis 
that the null hypothesis is that the model is not useful. When the model is not useful, if none of these variables, um, if none of the variables explain um, the response, that is the loan salary, and none of them can explain loan salary if the beta 1 equals beta 2 and so on up to beta 7 equals zero and the alternative is that um, to be simple i just say otherwise otherwise means that just one beta not zero is enough to reject the null hypothesis and say that the model is useful okay so then to test this model we know that this will be based on f distribution distribution so you compare the value of the f here here that is 225 206.25 you compare it with the value of f distribution with the degrees of freedom of 7 and 92 okay so from here also we can get 7 is because there are 7 variables to be tested here and the 92 is that the number of observations minus the total number of uh, regression coefficients, which is 8, this including beta naught. So we have uh, 92, which means that we have this uh, model fit is obtained by doing uh, the data processing on 100 observations. Okay. And then you can just look at the value of f online, but then I will just, um, we can just look at the p-value here. The p-value is 0, less than 0 0.05. So then the conclusion is that we can reject the null hypothesis. Reject the null hypothesis and we conclude that the model is useful. How useful is that model? We look at the r squared. Is 94% and the adjusted R squared is only 0.4% reduced, which means that it's just a small amount of reduction. So uh, it means that the model is okay. Seems like all the variables um, included in the model they are um, contributing in explaining the y values because no significant no big difference between the value of r squared and adjusted r squared and then we can verify it using you know the partial t test for each of the uh, uh, parameter and all the p values are less than 0.05 so we can say that they are all significant and contributed in explaining the logarithm of the salary okay now we know the model is quite good so now we can just try to gain insight from the result for example what is the role of experience years of experience right okay years of experience that is the x1 what is the role of that one in explaining the salary okay so from this equation here Okay, so from this equation here, we get that, okay, seems like if we increase experience by one year or for employee who is one year, who has more experience, like one year longer in experience than other employees, and the other conditions are the same so the increase in the lo logarithm of the salary or, or he or she will have 0 0.0436 more in the logarithm natural logarithm of the salary compared to those who are less experienced but wait you can't say that why? Because first, as we can see here, there's experience, there's the quadratic form of the experience. 
which means that when we learned about the quadratic model, these variables or these um, parameter estimate, um, estimate cannot be interpreted um, separately. Okay, what we can say is that we just look what kind of curvature curve is that if the um, uh, squared part is negative, it is upward or downward. Okay, we'll just do some simulation here. So, let's say, okay, let's, ah, okay, let's generate, for example, a hundred sample from uniform distribution from minus 10 to 10, and then I just have, okay, x is minus 2x squared, and then, for example, plus 5x plus 7, what? What's wrong? Oh, okay. So, plus 5x plus 7, and then we just need to plot x and y. Okay. So, if we put the negative sign for the x squared, is the downward. Just to make sure, if I put the positive sign, then it should be upward, right? Okay. So, change it again. Okay. So, then what does it mean? But in, when it increases, it increases with, you know, getting slower and slower the rate of increasing. You know, when uh, you move this much on the x side, you move that much on the y side. And then you do the same here, but the increment in y is no longer as big as before. So the rate of increasing is getting slower. And then at some point, does the other way around getting um, lower and lower so which means that in relation to this result that we have experience but it has negative um, sign for the quad, uh, good feature quadratic term so we can say that experience people with more experience tends to get higher um, salary okay but then at some time points, um, they are like having um, lower salary. I think it just makes sense because, you know, at some time points that maybe they should be retired. So no more productive. So when they reach that age, instead of having more salary, then they just get lower salary. This just makes sense, right? Okay. So we can't say uh, something, uh, I mean that we can't uh, explain this in a single number, that 0 0.04 have to be in accordance with this one. And then at, at what age is that, when, at what, at what age is that when the experience, not what age actually, after how many years, because then in that case, the x-axis is the years of experience, right? And the y-axis is the logarithm of the salary. So then the question here is that, okay, I just write it down. So the question number one is that after what year? After how many years of experience? that the salary will go down instead of increasing, okay? You can do the math, right? Because um, actually you just need to find this, okay? So the question is, the question is here and it's again Keep in mind that when we talk about the um, years of experience, it means that all other variables are set to constant, okay? So this is the first question that you need to answer as a result of this lecture. Okay, next, uh, what is it? Now we look at the 
effect of, for example, educational level, right? Because then, okay, years of education. Um, let's see, x2, x2, there's no interaction with other variables, right? Okay, so here, when we look at the level of uh, education, I think that probably I need to type down the, uh, uh, what is it? The gradient fit. So the, the long salary is at 9.86 plus 0 0.04 of the experience plus 0 0.03 of the education or uh, plus 0 0.12, I just rounded up to two digits of gender plus point wow nums up or this one zero 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 three of the number of employees a supervised plus the asset is point zero zero two of the assets minus point zero 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 six of the experience squared plus zero point zero 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 three of interaction between gender and the number of supervision okay so maybe just put it like this oh no oopsie just leave it like that okay so then for example i want to know the effect of the education you can just say that, okay, you increase education by one year, the learned salary is increased by 0.3 years, but it's just ridiculous. Who wants to know about the loan of the salary? People just want to know about the salary. So in this case, you need to do a little bit of your math. Okay, it's not that complicated actually. So just copy this and this. Let's say education is your education equals a years okay and then so we have this the education is that okay times a right and then now we have Now we have that education is A plus 1, okay? So for people who are more educated, measured by the years they spent in formal education, one year longer than here is that A plus 1, okay? So then we have the difference in that um, learn of the salary Length of the salary is that okay? This minus this is just you know, it's gone. The experience is just the same, so it's gone. And then point three a we have it there, so this one is gone. And then gender and all other thing, they are just the same. Oopsie. So. They all just gone, right? So then what we have here is that just point zero three. Okay. So that's the difference in the logarithm, natural logarithm of the salary. And then just doing a little bit of math that is this is the learn of salary say I just put this of two okay I just copy again the previous one okay this is what we have previously okay so this is long salary two the second condition this is the first condition so this is minus Learn of salary one. Okay. Oh, I don't need to put the bracket actually, but it's alright. 
this one is at point zero three. And then you know the logarithm, right? Difference in logarithm is actually the logarithm of the ratio, right? So this is actually salary one divided by salary two. Okay. And then that is point zero three. And then you do further math process to get rid of the logarithm so you have that salary one divided by salary two is that e to the power of 0 0.03 and so here we have that salary two is that no yeah salary one 2 minus 1, right? Logarithm 2 minus logarithm 1. Yes. Okay. 1, 2, logarithm 2 minus logarithm 1. Okay. So, salary 1. Okay. I'll just say salary 1 is that e to the power of 0 0.03 of salary 2. Okay. So this is how we do the interpretation or if we do it the other way around we do the other way around then we have salary 2 is that e to the power of minus 0 0.03 right times salary 1 okay and that is it correct? Yup. Education salary two. Yep. Yep. So then what is the value of e to the power of minus point three? E to the power of minus point zero three is point ninety-seven. So we can say this is 0.97 of salary 1 mm. which is kind of like funny okay why do I say funny because it doesn't kind of like in line with what we know in general that is that it should be positive okay let us see where did we go wrong point three a cell two minus logarithm of salary one is this thing yep oh here here is where we go wrong here is two over one yep silly me sorry about that two over one and then so salary two is salary one which is um what is e to the power of point three one point zero three so we have one point Zero three, okay. So what you need to you need to double check it is that if the coefficient is zero, then there's no change, right? So just the same. But if it is positive, then the change should be greater than one. So it was kind of like strange when I got uh, it's less than one, but that's because of the mistakes in here. Okay, so what we can say about this is that, okay, for those people who are, I mean that the higher level of education that you have, the higher salary that you will get. And then by how much, okay, people who are one year, who spent one year more, longer, one year longer for education, 
the new receive the salary like um 1.03 times the salary of those people who are having less education it is just 1.03 is 3% higher okay so it depends on the initial point um, of the salary see the increase is like different depends on if the salary one is 1 million for example then you have one year uh, one more year in your education then your salary is 1.03 times 1 million if it starts with 10 million then 1.03 times 10 million and so on okay so that's why the increase is not constant unlike in the uh, uh, linear regression or in the additive model I mean. okay it is constant is constant in the sense that the increase in the uh, logarithm of the salary is 0 0.03 but it just doesn't make sense to say something like that so you have to do a little bit of math process like this one okay so for the next interpretation about the gender for example it's just the same here but to be quick gender here it is one is male zero is female then in here i can see that the gender is positive so i can say i can say that uh, male usually get higher salary than female by how much so then it's your task to do the calculation and again there is like okay is the evidence of gender discrimination in the firm yes it is because what we just saw here for the gender the p-value is that 0 0.002 it means that the gender there is a gender bias and then just like what we just did in the interpretation because this is positive and because it is one it is defined one for male it means that the male has higher salary than female with all other conditions are the same that is by e to the power of 0 0.11661 that's the multi uh, the multiplier but wait because there is the effect on the interaction between the gender a number of employees supervised so then we can't really say like what we did before we can't really um, or do we can so I think that I leave it for you to verify what is the effect of gender the effect of gender in um, um in the salary okay so like as we learned in the previous session on the categorical regression with c regression with categorical video um try to do your math or try to write down what is the model or the fitted model for for male and what is the fitted model for female and then um, you need to answer this question is there evidence of gender discrimination and then I will add one more question that is um, how do you interpret the effect of gender uh, in relation to the salary that um, is paid to the employee okay so that will be your task by the end of this session okay and then yes okay, so we have here uh, the way of uh, doing the interpretation that we've um, conducted before and that there's one thing that we need to be aware of okay so that is sometimes you know we want to compare um, the r squared for example like for this okay um that's the first question before and then you have the second question 
is that a model for males, model for females, and interpretation of gender effect in salary. That's the second question. Okay, going back to the R squared. Okay, we often try to compare, for example, this one. So probably, okay, so probably, oopsie. Okay, I'll just start a new page. Okay, usually the first model is that some people just start with, okay, just the salary. Okay, this is at, as the first model, and then later we will um, learn in the model diagnostic some assumptions that might not be fulfilled when we do this model, and then one way to um, solve it or to improve it is that by doing transformation and we have this model okay so then but then people tend to like do the comparison which model is um, giving a better explanation is it the first one or the second one and then they just compare the r squared now it is not a load why because remember the nature of the r squared okay so here in here the r squared is calculated as one minus if you still remember the formula here is that if i'm not mistaken y i okay y i minus y i cap right square and then okay that's the sum of it and then here we have down here is that the y bar right so where the y here is the salary but then for the second model the r squared so here is the r squared of the salary uh, r squared of the salary while in here what we have is that the r squared of the loan salary is that comes from the loan of yi see the logarithm of the yi minus oh oh okay logarithm of the yi minus the predicted logarithm of the y i okay and here is the same is the logarithm of the y i minus the average of the logarithm of the y okay so of course they have different scale i mean that just look at let's say we have y we have logarithm of y and then let's say we have y 1 10 100 thousand 10 thousand 100 thousand and then here we have the logarithm of this is just 0 1 2 oh, okay I'll take the logarithm, yeah. Okay, or too easy to check. Yeah, it's alright, we just use this. So then, going back to this formulation that you have here, difference in yi 
and its predicted value. Hopefully, the predicted value is not that much with the actual value. It's on that kind of scale. And then the difference in the logarithm of yi with the predicted logarithm is, us, is on a totally different scale, which means that the value in here and the value in here, they cannot be compared. Okay, so just in case that you get the R squared salary is higher than R squared of the loan salary, it doesn't mean that this R squared is really um, saying much more explanation compared to this one. So in that case, what comparison that is appropriate of course, you have to transform it back so they are kind of like on the same scale. So, what is that same scale? Is that because here you have the logarithm of salary, you have to transform it, okay, into the salary itself. So, then you have to get that y cap, oopsie, your y cap is that as the exponential of what you get from the model is that the expected value of the logarithm of the y oopsie okay of the logarithm of y So you need to do this, okay, and then also for the y you transform it and then you do the calculation like um, the one up here. That way you can compare the r squared, okay. So that's the takeaway message from this session. If you do the transformation on the response variable, then you can't compare the resulting R squared. If you want to do the comparison, then you have to recalculate the R squared from the transformed model so they are in the same scale. Okay? So I think that's all that you need to know about the multiplicative model up to this moment. Don't forget to do your task. Um, these two questions, okay, for your task is that you need to find after how many years of experience that the salary will go down instead of increasing. And then the second one is to do the interpretation on the gender effect in the salary. And then after that, you decide whether there is gender bias or not in this um, company based on um, this model. Okay, so that's all. Thank you for your attention. See you next time in another session.